Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's TVO coming to you from the Bluestone Road on Mount Anthony in Bennington, Vermont. This is one of my favorite places in the whole world to run. It's a four mile road, all uphill, at about a five to six percent grade to the summit of Mount Anthony. No cars, just a nice old road through the woods. And as I'm out here, I'm thinking about how I view exercise now as to how I viewed exercise when I began the Running Raw Project and for most of the time that I engaged in it. For many of the past 10 years, running and exercise for me was about getting in peak physical shape and winning races, being at the top of my game. But since my Achilles tendon injury, I've come away with a very different perspective. I now see exercise not so much about getting in great shape, but more so about functioning better throughout the day, having a better experience throughout my day. So I get out into the woods, put on a great book, educate myself, enjoy the relaxing environment that I'm in, listen to the birds, look at the trees, get a lot of stimulus, get a lot of chemicals in the air from these plants, which actually help to regulate gene expression in the human body. Lots of studies done on this in Japan, and Tony Wright talks about it in the book, uh, Left in the Dark. So what I'm doing, much more so than getting in shape, is putting myself in a state where I am better able to handle the day in front of me. So this is not exercise. This is a warm-up. This is getting myself into a state where the world is abundant, where my thoughts are abundant, where my ability to confront things is not only stronger, but I'm much more resilient in those confrontations. I don't get knocked down as easily after I've exercised. So again, it's not so much like, oh, I gotta run 30 minutes to get in shape and I have to run at this pace, uh, this heart rate, I have to do these many hills. Not anymore. Now it's simply about getting myself into a state where life is more fun, where I feel more capable of handling what comes next. And I'm out here relaxing, having a great time. Yeah, it's like, you're running up a mountain, how can that be relaxing? Well, I'm going at a pace that's comfortable for me, and it's beautiful. If I were to run on a road, I wouldn't be as comfortable. Running with traffic, dodging cars, just looking at pavement and man-made structures, but out here, the forest comes me, it has a really positive effect on my neurochemistry, as does the exercise. So I want to talk a little bit about exercise and how it affects the brain. There are people that have judged me or criticized me over the past five years especially because I talk about depression. And they say, you're a vegan, you're a raw foodist, how could you still be depressed on this diet. That diet cures depression. Eating lots of fruits and vegetables cures depression, so what's wrong with you? You're doing something wrong. Well, if you look at the model of depression, it has a little bit to do with diet. And most of what people consider depression that is mitigated or alleviated by diet isn't really depression. It's just a sluggishness in the body, and therefore sluggishness in the mind because the brain is part of the body. And when you start to eat better, you remove that physical and therefore mental sluggishness, yeah, things get easier and you're a bit happier because you're better able to engage in the world, but that's not depression, that's just sluggishness. Depression is a stress response. So food can be a stressor and the effects of being sluggish for extended periods of time and how that impacts your social life, how that impacts your work life, how that impacts your self-esteem or self-concept, that can be stressful. But depression is all about stress. It is, some people say, an overreaction to stress. I say it's an appropriate reaction to stress. It's where the brain says, I'm pulling you out of the game. You're gonna get hurt if you continue uh, competing, if you continue in this stressful situation, you're gonna get hurt. 
And this is why I'm not a fan of antidepressants, because they allow people to continue in the situation that shut them down to begin with. What you need to do is change the situation, get out of the situation, reframe the situation, not just numb the pain and get back into the situation. I don't think that's a healthy approach, although in our modern world, people say, well, I can't just quit my job. I've got to go back to work. I've got to be a good dad. But there is a cost to doing that. So this, for me, is my antidepressant, getting outside in the woods and exercising. So back to exercise. Many, many studies of late have shown that the brain does not function at a normal level without physical movement, without aerobic activity. Now, I don't like to use the term aerobic activity because it makes people think about exercise. It makes people think about working out or going to the gym or running up a mountain. Oh my God, this thing that's extra, it's not part of my life. It's this thing that is painful, uncomfortable that I have to do in addition to my life. I've got my family, I've got my job, I've got my relationship, my hobbies, and then I've got to somehow find a way to fit in exercise. But aerobic activity can be gardening. It can be doing the dishes vigorously. It can be taking a walk with a friend. It can be listening to a book while exploring the woods. Again, I'm not out here to get a workout in. I'm out here because I'm physically capable of running up a mountain, so it's not that hard for me. And mentally, this experience transforms me. So I'm on an adventure now. I, before I got in the car, I said to myself, let's have an adventure. Let's do something fun. Let's create a really powerful experience rather than, oh man, I gotta run for an hour. No, this aerobic activity for me is an adventure. And you can do that as well. You can create adventures in your life that are physically vigorous and therefore are going to have an aerobic benefit. So back to what I said about the brain. Your brain, the human brain, does not function at a normal level unless you have a minimum of 150 minutes a week of aerobic activity. I'll say that again. Your brain does not function at a normal level unless you have 150 minutes of aerobic activity every week. 30 minutes a day, five days a week, get your body moving on some kind of adventure or inside of some hobby that engages you in vigorous activity but has more benefit than simply the exercise itself. So don't make exercise the result or the end goal. Simply move through the world powerfully on this adventure that sets you up to more powerfully and resiliently handle whatever comes at you next throughout the day. So I don't care how intelligent you are, I don't care how productive you are at work, I don't care what kind of diet you're eating, all the data shows that if you're not moving your body aerobically 30 minutes a day for five days a week, your brain is not even functioning at a normal level. It's not like we're going from normal to peak brain, uh-uh. That level of activity gets you to normal brain function. Do 300 minutes a week if you can. Now we're moving into peak brain function. And that's what I experienced when I was training uh, for marathons, 50Ks and whatnot. Uh, sometimes training 21 hours a week. Wow, was my brain on fire. I could learn things so fast and I could retain just about everything that I learned. I could listen to a couple hours of electron biochemistry and then go back and repeat it almost verbatim to you. It has been a profound experience to be physically active, engaged in the world, in a natural environment that is stimulating in a way that our brain resonates with because for most of human existence, we were not in concrete with square buildings and straight lines and edges. We were in really chaotic natural environments like this one. Our brain understands these. It's set up to thrive in this kind of environment. But a concrete, square, straight line, linear environment with lots of artificial stimulus, 
our brain can eventually adapt to that to some degree, but it's not optimal. So get out, get your body moving. I don't care how old you are. There's a benefit for the brain, regardless of your age. If you're in your 90s exercising, or should I say having a physical adventure uh, for 30 minutes a day, will have a profound impact on the health of your brain, regardless of your age. So get your body moving, all right? Get out there, create some adventures. Don't think of it as exercise. Just explore your world and have fun doing it. And you will see a huge benefit in not only your intelligence and your memory, but in the health of your brain as you age. Okay, I hope that helps. See ya. This is the only material that I run in now. And when I wear my running raw shirts, I actually put them over reg shirts. I made a video a couple years ago where I talked about nipple chafing. <laughs>